Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Artcasters number 131. And I am here, as always, with Joshua Kimball. Hey, Josh, hey. Where, how are you and where can everyone find you? All right. Um, I'm doing all right. And uh, everybody can find me on the YouTubes under Joshua Kimball with a K. And you can uh, read my current graphic novel that I'm working on at quarterlystories.com. So those are the two places. Yeah. All right, and you're on my channel, so you probably know where to find me, but if you don't, I'm at CircWorks.com. CircWorks, most places on the internet, CircWorks on YouTube, and uh, I will be at Phoenix Comic Con uh, next weekend, Thursday through Friday, Memorial Day weekend, and I forgot my table number, but I will let you know at the end of the show. And uh, so tonight's topic, we're going to talk a little bit about licensed characters, working with licensed characters. Um, Josh and I have had some experience, probably Josh a little more than me. I haven't worked on licensed characters since like probably one of my first art jobs way back when. Um, but our guest tonight has done a lot of work on licensed characters as well as his own original stuff, which he'll probably talk about as well. But I thought it'd be kind of a good topic because I don't know if that's something we've talked about, but he's worked on some really cool stuff. I'll let him tell you, but you know, SpongeBob, Scooby-Doo, he mentioned Jim Henson. So I don't know what he's done for Jim Henson. Maybe you can let us know about that because I am a huge Henson fan. But uh, our guest is Vincent DePorter. Hey, Vincent, how's it going? Doing well. How are you guys doing? We're doing awesome. Glad to have you on the show. Nice to be here. Where can everyone find you online, Vincent? And we so, do have links. We do have links in the description where they, a lot yeah. of links where you can find Vincent. But I'll let them tell you as well. I, I have a new website on the um, WordPress uh, place, but it's it's just starting. So I'm, I, you know, uh, until then, I encourage everybody to just Google my name, and then you'll see the Facebook, Instagram, and all the stuff I do. Um, uh, but you can find me on Instagram and uh, on Facebook. Uh, Instagram is a little bit new for me. So I just started, and you'll see my comic book stuff, but you'll also see my portrait stuff. I, I, uh, I just did uh, one of uh, Ariana Grande, for example. So you know, I, I, I dabble a little bit in everything. <laughs> and yeah, and and if you haven't seen Vincent's work, I mean, obviously, if you've seen, that's one thing about licensed characters is you really have to nail those likenesses to a T, and he can definitely do that. But then. I've seen some of his other stuff, and he's very versatile. And he can do realistic stuff. He can do serious content. He can do cartoon. It's just it amazes me that the stuff that uh, people like like you can do with just how you can just adapt to all these different styles and everything. Well, you kind of have to be a chameleon to yeah. uh, you know. Uh, I've done Batman, Superman, um, and then you go from Batman, Superman, and then in the same afternoon, I would do the Flintstones. So, awesome. uh, you kind of have to change, and it's still the same brush. I still use the paintbrush on, you know, the, the ink brush and on paper. I still work on paper. I, I did a few uh, SpongeBob comics on uh, the tablet, and I fooled my editor, actually, because it was, um, uh, I've, I've constructed, I, I, I've done my own uh, custom brushes on Photoshop. I've been on Photoshop since 95, actually, so that was Photoshop 2. Yeah, so I, think I, I, started, started, yeah. I think I started on three, yeah. so a little bit I, of that. And as you know, the custom brushes uh, came a little later, but I, I've been doing custom brushes that fools anybody. And actually, I, I do digital painting and drawing, as you can see on my Instagram. Um, I still do it the old traditional way, but I just love doing it on, on Photoshop because it gives that flexibility. You know, you can go back and change something you did wrong. Um, I love the flexibility, but it's still hand drawn. You know, it's still hand drawn. It's still art. It's still, you know, no matter. Yeah. So it doesn't. You know, everybody says, "Oh, but you you may be tracing." People think you're tracing over uh, photos, which sometimes I do. But I said, you know, uh, nobody criticizes uh, Norman Rockwell right. for tracing on. You know, his uh, he used to uh, project pictures with his slides and he used to trace that, and nobody, you know, tells him that he was tracing. Everybody copies, you know, Van Gogh copied real life. Everybody copies real life. So uh, when it comes to uh, art, uh, I understand the loss of that uh, beautiful, you know, hand drawn and signed something that was done by the artist, you know, hand drawn. But um, uh, digitally, it doesn't change the work at all. Actually, it gives it more flexibility, if anything. No, and it's, I mean, it's just like you said, the, the technology has just advanced so much that yeah. a lot of times you can't even tell. I, I can show you here, if I if I do the switch well enough, I can show you the Ariana Grande I just did yesterday. And I don't know if um, it'll show. Tell me if it shows. 
Does it show? Yeah, you just have to keep talking. Okay, so um, I'm going to just zoom in a little bit. You see, this is all by hand. It's not nothing is is everything is hand drawing here. You know. So yeah. that's uh, that's her. I did a few other ones, um, and then also and my signature. By the way, I'm I'm doing T-shirts with my signature, à la demande of everybody. Everybody's been asking for T-shirts with uh, <laughs> with my my signature on it. So we'll awesome. see what happens. Uh, so that's just to show you a little bit the, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to stop sharing that right now. But uh, So I'm back to normal here. Uh, I'm not as good looking, unfortunately. And I'm very sorry for that. So <laughs> <laughs> that's the way it is. So there. Um, so that's, that's my job. Uh, when it comes to licensing, yes, I did a lot of licensing. A lot. In fact, in the early 2000s, when you used to go to the Warner Brothers stores, Almost all the Batman, oh. Superman T-shirts, underwear, they were all yep. inked by myself. Yeah. So that, that kind of leads into my, when, the first, you know, how I kind of got into licensing is, was the Warner Brothers Studio Stores. Was, I used to work for the architectural firm that designed all those crazy, elaborate setups they had with the, with the sculpture, the big giant sculptures of all the characters. Yeah. So we would, we would have, um, you know, we did one where there was a train bust, an actual train busting out of the ground. And then, uh, and like Bugs Bunny was hanging off the engine and Daffy Duck was hanging mm -hmm. off. And then we did this giant pirate ship that was suspended over this mall, this two-story mall. And I mean, we just did the amaze, the most amazing stuff. So I got to do it. I got to design a lot of that stuff. And then we would do, we would do some of the ancillary stuff that went along with it. But yeah, I did. And then through that, because that was, you know, Warner Brothers, I did some, at the time, I, I think we had to do a statue of Alfred E. Newman for Mad Magazine. Oh, cool. And at that point, they, at least this is what they told us, that there was never any back view ever done of Alfred E. Newman. It was always from the front. Mm -hmm. So I had to do the, the turnaround sketches of Alfred E. Newman for, for the sculpture. So I did that and, you know, got to do a little Batman and stuff. And then we would also – and then we got into doing um, – they also had, they weren't as popular, but there was a Sesame Street General Store. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got to work on the, I didn't get to work on any of the Muppet characters, but I got to work on all the Sesame Street characters and actually design, there was a big backdrop of um, of that, you know, kind of that's just the street, the Sesame Street with the, mm -hmm. you know, Big Bird's little, you know, house and, you know, the, the kind of brownstones and everything. And I got to do that, work on that illustration. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, but that's, that's kind of, that was probably my, you know, my, you know, I guess the, the, I've done a little bit of licensing since then. I did some stuff with Nickelodeon, but um, not to that extent, but it's mm -hmm. been a while. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's kind of interesting. And it's better paid than doing comics. I can tell you that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just kind of wanted to say, and this is maybe backtracking a little bit, but so um, the cool thing about Vincent is he lives like down the street from me. And uh, at, at one point, and I don't, Vincent probably doesn't remember this, but um, at one point his kids, our kids went to the same school and they were having like a fair for the school and he was out there drawing uh, SpongeBob like commissions and I think he was donating the process, the proceeds to the, uh, to, I don't know, the, whatever the school fund was. Yeah, I, well, I forget what it was, so, but uh, I remember that very well. It was, uh, it was fun. So that, yeah. It's yeah, funny. so my my daughter has one of Vincent's drawings. It was <laughs> it was on her wall for on her door for the longest time, and we just remodeled, so she took it down. I was going to find it, but I don't know where she put it. But well, it, but yeah. it, it, it probably got this. At one point, you have to take it off the wall when there's uh, too many uh, dart uh, holes in it. <laughs> <laughs> but it, my my daughter is big into dance. But it was so it was SpongeBob. My daughter too. Is that funny? Oh, yeah. My yeah. daughter too. She's a she's a dancer. Really, she 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 uh, always uh, has some lead roles when she does you know dance things. So does she's she, happy about that. Yeah, she 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 loves that. That's right. and I know this isn't interesting to anyone probably but us. But I just since we're on the topic, I just wanted to ask: Does she dance in any studios here in town? No, she uh, she okay. has a uh, some um, personal lessons with a okay. dance teacher, but okay. she uh, she does school stuff. You know, like you know. Okay. Cool. They're yeah, in a good I was year. just curious if they maybe they went to the same dance studio or something, but um, but yeah, it's, it's cool. So I, I had gone to Free Comic Book Day and uh, went to the local comic book store, and Vincent was there signing. So we started up a conversation, and uh, you know, it's, I think it's cool that uh, 
Vincent, and there was another artist that I missed that, that also lives here. So it's kind of cool that there's this little, in my neck of the woods, there's this community of comic book artists. So mm -hmm. that's kind of cool. But anyway, so I guess I guess I'm curious. How did you start in in uh, working with licensed characters? Was that kind of, I mean, or what had you done previously, or how did that all come about? Well, what happened was in uh, in France, uh, in Europe, in Belgium, you know, the French, what we call in French, la francophonie, which is the French speaking part of Europe, uh, and Canada is included. Uh, I had my own series. I, I, I had my own comic books. Um, that was doing okay for a little while, but, you know, it just kind of tapered off. But I, I came to New York in 1996 with a little bit of a reputation from France, not from here. And uh, I um, immediately was helped by uh, the other uh, artist and the penciler of most of the uh, licensing stuff at Warner Brothers stores. Uh, his name is Eric Dosher, and I have a lot of thanks to give to him because he's, a, first of all, an amazing artist, and he introduced me to his uh, uh, the licensing, you know, guru of DC Comics, which is uh, David Irwin. And uh, he doesn't work for DC Comics anymore. He does the Transformers now, but he was, like, number one Batman. You know, everything that had to do with licensing Batman went through him. And um, he had a reputation of being quite serious about, you know, what his job was. Uh, but we met, and we... Right away, he made me work that very week. I was only visiting New York at the time. He made me work right away on on um, the infamous Batman and Robin movie, <laughs> uh, the one with George Clooney. But um, so I did some uh, style guide stuff for, for that as a tryout. And then we I, I worked for him a lot. We became friends, and uh, uh, I did a lot of licensing stuff with him and Eric Dosher, which was... Uh, the one that uh, you know introduced me to to DC Comics, and from there I went to doing comic book stuff, which was mainly Scooby Doo and all the Cartoon Network stuff. I did Ed, Ed and Eddie, I did um, uh, Looney Tunes, I did all kinds of stuff, uh, and I was most comfortable, and still am more comfortable with the uh, uh, Hanna Barbera stuff, and um, so I ended up being the Scooby Doo guy, and I, I did some of the most uh, you know. Uh, apparently appreciated covers of Scooby Doo comics too. So I did inside and outside. And then so I stayed with DC Comics for about 16, 17 years. And they changed their policies a little bit and uh, the editors changed and there was a uh, change up. And, and I, I was already working for uh, Nickelodeon. I was doing um, uh, the Rugrats for Nickelodeon. Uh, and then uh, Chris Duffy, the uh, editor of uh, Nickelodeon magazine, uh, called me one day and he said, we have something right up your alley. And he showed me the first three cartoons of Unfinished of Spongebob. Awesome. And I was laughing my head off and I loved it right away. And so I was the first one to draw Spongebob in uh, Nickelodeon magazine, along with Scott Roberts was the penciler, I was the inker. And uh, as uh, Nickelodeon magazine went uh, down at one point, uh, the uh, uh, Hillenberg himself, the creator, started the comic book. And then I was called to do the comic book. And then I ended up uh, even being writing, writing and drawing stories. So and did covers and stuff so that's awesome. my story yeah it's like you know i i remember when spongebob first came out and i'm i just by the name and everything i was like this this sounds stupid this is and then but once i actually sat down and watched it i'm like this is brilliant <laughs> it was just so, well yeah so it, it was uh, it was very hard we didn't think it was going to work because we were hoping it was going to work but it was very it was at the uh, time where everything was educational it was a Blue's Clues, Dora started, uh, everything was educational. Uh, and here we are with a, com with a cartoon that is reminiscent of Bugs Bunny, you know, that was totally ridiculously silly. It didn't have any aim to teach anything except how to laugh. And so uh, we thought we were not in the right era to make it work. And then for two years, it was difficult. And then uh, all of a sudden, it popped out and became what it became today. Yeah, that's it. That is definitely one of those things that it just took a little while for it to catch on. Yeah, but, but Hillenberg had a great idea, and he's he's a he's a um, he's a what you, marine biologist teacher teacher. So he he went ahead and did everything contrary to real <laughs> real science, <laughs> and but he knows his subject, and uh, I think he's a genius. You know. Awesome. So. Um, so just the because it is so difficult and it's it's especially working with like cartoons because they're deceptively simple and i'm sure i mean the i mean you've drawn spongebob so many times you could probably say how many you know little you know pits or spots he has and all this mm -hmm. different stuff how many eyelashes all that stuff and 
because it's so simple, it's so if you if you miss one little thing, it just throws the whole thing off and it doesn't look like SpongeBob. So I'm how I mean, is it did that kind of come natural to you to be able to kind of just yeah kind of adapt that style or did it, it take some getting used to and because like the stuff that I did wasn't as crucial because it wasn't printed. It was mostly conceptual stuff. So I didn't have to be as on point as as what you did. So I'm I'm just kind of curious because you know it is it's you got to get it like perfect like to the point where you know I used to do uh, I used to do murals and for that just kind of like what you're ta talking about a lot of the times I would I would just find images that some other artists did and I I put a project them on a opaque projector and trace them because I could sit there and I could sketch and get all the, and and work and work and work and I could probably get a very good approximate approximation. But it would it just still wouldn't look as perfect as like somebody who knows what they're doing. So but it, it's it's really difficult. And you can tell anytime I've seen so many people try to do that that aren't that just can't get it and it just does yeah. not look right. So, so the advantage I mean, of uh, the yeah. advantage of SpongeBob, I think, and, and it has a lot to do with Chris Duffy, the editor of Nickelodeon magazine at the time, but also uh, of SpongeBob comics. Uh, he has a taste for weird comics, like comics we don't usually see. And so Hillenberg always accepted the fact and liked the fact that uh, Duffy would start uh, producing comics that didn't look like SpongeBob at all, but were, you, you could see it was SpongeBob and Patrick, but in a style that was not the TV style at all. Yeah. And I, I thought that was the rich, the, the, the rich part of uh, the SpongeBob comics was the fact that it didn't have to be on model. It could be totally done by an artist in his style. This said, uh, because I'm a licensing guy, uh, I was expected to do SpongeBob faithful to the comic, to the cartoon. Uh -huh. And I have no problem with that. I, on the contrary, I, I feel comfortable. Uh, SpongeBob was in my style, so I didn't have to do a lot of uh, um, uh, practicing to get him right. Uh, but the funny, I'll tell you a funny story though, guys. <laughs> is that uh, the first time I did a SpongeBob, uh, they said, no, 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 it's not on model. And I was like, what? I'm, I, you know, I've been doing this already at that time for like, you know, 25 years, I say, or 30 years. I said, what do you mean it's not on model? It's on fucking model. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and they said, no, no. And it's because the holes weren't in the right uh, place. The holes are really in a certain, uh, you'll see the holes on SpongeBob are always the same unless they're drawn by somebody who's doing his style. But so, um, so the holes weren't right. So I had yeah, to that's what I was saying. It has to be so, so on point. Yeah. yeah now, even I, my eyelashes weren't totally right the first time. They said, no, that's not, you're doing, mm, that's not good. Huh. So I had to, I had to do it um, the, 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 style, the style guide way. And so, but it had, it was no problem. I mean, I, I was into it like in a few days I was, I was yeah. on, on track. Yeah. That was my experience with um, with the like the the area of licensing that I do is a little different because I think most of the time we're actually pulling assets like this is my day job, mm -hmm. um, but we're pulling assets that are already available on the Warner Brothers site. So probably a lot of the stuff like someone in your position is kind of creating mm -hmm. um, for Warner Brothers, and then we're having to stick to these really rigid style guides, and it has yeah. to go through the licensing approval process. Um, and there's like, they rarely accept like even a variation, like if you move an arm, you know? Oh yeah. Um, but, uh, but what's interesting is like, to me, the, the working for a property, there was this time when I was a young artist who had just gotten into comics and I showed one of the indies that I had published to um, the editor at the time of Bongo, uh, Bill Morrison. Yeah. And he handed me a packet. He was like, dude, this is great. I'd love to have you try out and, and do some stuff for, you know, the Simpsons. Mm -hmm. And I remember looking through this like Bible of paper of just, you know, like Bart turned in this direction has like two dots length, you know, and then it would be like, this is off. And it's by like the slightest little margin. And I, re I remember just reviewing it and being like, I don't think I want to submit to this because it just felt like math mm -hmm. at that point. Yeah. Like there, were, I, I remember, I think I got out a sheet of paper and was like, going to try. And then I was like, no, I can't do this. And I, t I ended up meeting a guy a couple of years later who, who does that. And, uh, and he has like that kind of mind that can kind of 
balance mm-hmm. between the really mathematical and the really, but to me, it's kind of cool that like what I've seen that you d- have done for SpongeBob and um, it, it looks cool because it looks like they're not quite as, like you were saying, not quite as meticulous about those dots. Yeah, no. right, and there's right. a lot of like allowance for like squash and stretch and all yes, the fun yes. stuff that we love about cartooning, you know? I, I did something for Scooby-Doo that I didn't think would go through. In fact, um, I'll show it to you right now. Uh, I was really surprised it went through, to be honest with you. Um, I'm gonna try to find it. Uh, wait, where do I look for that? Here or here? Um, bah, 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 bah. Uh, well, look, you guys can talk. I'm, I'm going to try to find something that will illustrate what you just said. Uh, let me do Scooby-Doo here. Uh, Scooby-Doo. I, it's a cover that I did not think would, would, would pass. Yeah. That's awesome. I, I think that um, the challenge, like, on, on the licensing end from, from that kind of the perspective of, like, when they're a little too rigid – with the guides is like really trying to do something creative with mm-hmm. really severe limitations. But, you know, then again, I guess with art, you know, like limitations can be really freeing too. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it can be. And, you know, it, it's just fun when you can, uh, for example, with, uh, with SpongeBob or Scooby-Doo, uh, I've always had uh, this thing where I hate to be on model, you know, like, uh, some uh, artists and I, I don't want to fault them for it. Yeah. Although I do. <laughs> is that they uh, they just copy the style guide? It's like they trace over it, you know. Yeah, it, it, and I, I find that absolutely uh, horrifying. I mean, it's just it, it is it, it has no character to it. It's horrible. I hate it. Uh, I'll show you what I did for Scooby Doo that I thought wouldn't go through, and it did. So let me show you. Let me give you a second here to show you this, and I'll zoom in on it. You guys <laughs> no way. Uh, I talk. never thought I'd get away with this because talking <laughs> about. Going away from from the style guide oh yeah you know and it went through it went through it was a cover for the scooby-doo comic book that's so yeah but that's that's like a certain scenario though but i i mean you can still tell the likenesses on the faces and stuff yeah the thing is that you have to keep the likeness right you know so Mm -hmm. that's the case here uh but you you know you have to uh uh create so i did not like to uh copy the style guides uh, so I wanted. So it's a little difficult because, uh, especially Scooby Doo, I'm not the best uh, artist for animals, uh, horses and dogs. So it, it it was work. It was a lot of work. Yeah. Does it so, take a while to kind of get in the flow of of like learning the model? Because you've worked on these properties for a while, yeah. and like so, like your first crack at it, it, is it kind of difficult to like start to kind of navigate it? Do you have to kind of draw them over and over again to kind of get the the flow of it? I think that's, you know, I, I don't think of myself as a great artist, but I do have that chameleon in me where I, I get really fast. If I have to draw something, I get really fast into it. I mean, I don't I don't work for days to get practice on a character. I just go straight to it. Yeah. That's awesome. That's I might cool. do a few doodles for, but I, that's, I do that every day. I doodle every day for half an hour before I draw anyways, you know. And now my doodles are usually portraits or thing. I, I did a Taylor Swift on my Instagram. I don't even saw it. And the only thing I did with her was she was all in uh, browns and yellows. But I, the only thing I did was her red lips, you know, since that's one of her trademarks. And uh, I put on Instagram, and it, you know, it seems it looks good. But it's it's what I do as I doodle before I. I yeah. You know. Yeah, we did. But uh, I don't have a hard. You know, the hardest one I had to do, the hardest one. You won't believe it. If you look at my uh, French style, actually, I'll give you a link to my uh, portfolio so you can download it, watch it, whatever you want. Um, but. Um, I did, uh, I did uh, Ed, Ed, and Eddie. And the funny thing with Ed, Ed, and Eddie is that they didn't have any turnarounds. Every expression is totally different from the other. They didn't have a, a, what you call a model sheet. You know, yeah. they, they really change. They're, they're organic. And the, that the light work is fluctuating, too, on that cartoon, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and they, 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 they called me in to yeah. do it. I think they knew that I would maybe be – it would be easier for me. Uh, it, and I, I, I did it. But um, – uh, and I like doing it, but man, oh man, I had nothing to go from except to c- the cartoons. So I just had to do it my way, thinking it was that way, and it, it turned out okay. But it was the, the it was really the most challenging one I ever had to do. You know, 
Yeah, so there's some stuff in the chat. So Mason Dross wants to know, do you have an Instagram, which you mentioned? Yes. Yeah. I, I, assume I assume you're talking about Vincent. Uh, we all have Instagram. But Vincent's Instagram is in the description of this video. You can click on that, plus his Facebook and, and some other. Are you on YouTube at all? I yes, YouTube I am. Right? Actually, I'm okay. on YouTube. But what I do on YouTube is, uh, is uh, a little bit uh, sometimes mostly unrelated to the comics. Uh, yeah. But I'm, uh, I have a new YouTube channel that's still in construction. There's only one video on there, and it's called Lemonade Crush It. So what you uh, – I think I sent you the link to that. I've got, I put the Facebook link for Lemonade yeah, Crush but, It. But then definitely, I, you definitely yeah, want to talk about that. But uh, It's a Facebook page, but you can also uh, – I'll send you the link of the YouTube too. Wait a minute. Okay. Give me a minute. So um, Adam Lore, who is a, a huge comic enthusiast, strip comics and everything, he says uh, – he says, I love how SpongeBob comics are off model. And he says, yeah. SpongeBob as a cartoon seems pretty open to including more off model drawings every mm -hmm. once in a while, too, which is great. And you notice that because every once in a while with SpongeBob to, to add impact, they'll cut away to like one of those kind of grotesque paintings, almost like yeah. the way uh, Ren and Stimpy yeah. used to do. Well, it, so, it is, uh, I, I will say, uh, uh, Hillenbrook never um, hid the fact that he was a big uh, Ren and Stimpy fan. So. Right. But yeah, yeah. So I mean, um, so I think Josh kind of touched on this, but I was curious as far as when you're working with licensed characters, if you're working on something, how do you make that transition? Do you usually do you usually bounce back and forth from, or are you or are you on like one comic book project, like you own well, SpongeBob yeah. and then you stop SpongeBob and you go to something else? Usually, how, yeah. Usually I do that, but uh, there there were times where I was doing Batman. Mm -hmm. And then in the afternoon, I would, in the morning, and then in the afternoon, I would be doing the Flintstones. So, yeah, I, you have to be uh, – I'm a freelancer, uh, so mainly you have to be a chameleon. You have to be able to go from realistic to, uh, you know. And, and is, there, is there difficulty going back and forth from one to the other? Sometimes. sometimes uh, it, it depends. It's really a mood thing, to be honest with you. <laughs> right. yeah. I just sent you the link to my uh, YouTube channel, the brand new one called Lemon Crush It. But okay. I, I sent it to you in, in um, the uh, chat here, yeah, in I our can, chat. So you can you can do it. You can make it public, okay? Yeah, I'll, uh, go, I'll go ahead and just... I and I'll also send you my, um, my uh, portfolio. So you guys can check out my portfolio. Uh, you can put that... That's uh, Everybody who's hearing this, uh, they have my permission to download it. I just want you guys to make sure you don't, you know, make money out of it. <laughs> but, yeah, just don't but, sell it. But you can, you can definitely download it and have a look, and you'll see the 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 the, the range I, I I have to work with because that's that's the whole point of being a freelancer. Yeah, is to have that range, you know. So yeah. this is not the principal version. I sent it to you just now. Uh, it's not the printable version. It's, do you see it here? HTTPS. I see the link. I, I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, you can you can make that public. Uh, it's not the printable version. I have a, a HD version that's printable, but that I only send to people who need to have it printed out. So, but you can you can definitely download it if you want. I mean, it's not okay. it's no secret. It, it's a little bit a show of uh, what I've done for Scooby Doo, my my uh, French stuff. And that will be in French, by the way, I think, or in English, I forget. Uh, and then I, um, you'll see some of my, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, graphic novel stuff I did for Denmark. And that is totally different, except for one thing. It's the same paintbrush on paper. Hmm. So if it you look gave at me an error when I posted it, on, but I'll, I'll post it in the description later. Yeah, I don't you, want you, you can put I'll it on. Just, I mean, I'll just try just one more time without yeah. the... I don't know. I don't know if you see it, Joshua. Okay, well, have a look. Uh, so oh, of course it's a Dropbox. It's a Dropbox. That's why it won't. It won't let me post it in in the YouTube thing. But really? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Well, you yeah. have to. You can. Well, we can put it on um, in chat. You can do it, right? Oh no, not in YouTube. No, I posted in the chat. It won't let me. No, but it, it won't let you. I got hey, it doesn't matter. You just yeah. uh, you can put it on the description box once the video. I is assume over. on your your web your website you've got some pictures of your work and everything. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You had shown you had shown me uh, some work that you did for a Norwegian comic, and I was kind yeah. of blown away because it was um, so different from SpongeBob, mm -hmm. a little more kind of like realistic and yeah. and obviously the the Ariana Grande thing you showed was was definitely more of a portraiture. So yeah, it's just amazing that you can kind of you can kind of adapt to all these different styles and do it so well mm -hmm. so sometimes i like the first time i was offered that i didn't know if i was going to accept because 
uh, I was doing SpongeBob for so many years, and I haven't yeah. done a realistic for a while. And then, it, but I took it as a challenge, and it was a lot of fun. It's like I said, same paintbrush, same paper, except that uh, I draw SpongeBob at the size of uh, publication. Really, so, that's yeah. interesting. I, I draw small. But for that comic book, I had to draw double the size because it was too much. It was cathedrals. Oh, yeah. It was uh, yeah. 500 people fighting. You know, it was a, it's a historical, uh, accurately historical um, de depiction of uh, 500 years ago in Denmark. There was the Reformation with uh, Martin Luther. And so it was a, it was a pretty big, big uh, thing to do. That sounds like a massive undertaking. Yeah. And these pages just look gorgeous for it. Now, so when you're navigating between styles like you know do you have a preferred style oh uh, yeah on? yeah the preferred style is what you see in lemon crush it basically got uh, it it's the funny you know loose uh it's closer to ed and Nettie, ironically uh, but that was my style uh 40 years ago already you know i i, I was a big a fan of mad magazine uh and I had one story that I wrote in Mad Magazine, only one that did the back cover, and Paul Coker did the uh, did the drawings. That's my only experience with Mad Magazine, <laughs> I, I, except the fact that I would go upstairs all the time uh, at DC Comics and we'd laugh our heads off there because they were such a bunch of crazy people. <laughs> uh, and and awesome. that's, a, that's a compliment, of course, in my in my <laughs> language, in my lingo. But they were they were really fun uh, people. Uh, Mad Magazine was always fun. It was always fun. The strip so, cartoons look great too. Did you do your own lettering? Yeah, yeah, I do my own lettering. Yeah. Oh man, your lettering is great. Yeah, Excellent. Josh does. Josh does. This, I mean, he he hand letter. His whole thing is all hand done and everything. And it's very different from yours in that you draw it at publication size, and Josh draws like poster yeah. size. But so I was curious. Do you find it faster to draw draw at actual size like that? For the oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's just I I have a uh, I do this. So I have my glasses right. Uh -huh. I put my glasses on, and believe it or not, I put a second pair. <laughs> oh, smart! <laughs> and then I, you know, because I'm really, I like to be precise. But the fact of, I love drawing the size of publication, because there's something about the paintbrush I like so much that I like to see its faults, and you can only see it if you give it, you know, or you blow, and it happened that I would sometimes work smaller and blow it up, just because I, I like that, you know, that that. Uh, that artistic uh, brush feel. Um, yeah, however, I can definitely see that there's like there's these little points that I'm yeah. seeing on your art where you can kind of see a little bit of dry brush, like just yeah. a yeah. just a smidge, and it's like just enough to kind of like really let you know that That's it's right. ink or at least emulating ink, yeah. which is great. Yeah, but even on my um my my uh, Photoshop brushes, I, I make it so that they. Uh, I, I tone down the, uh, you know, in, in, in the brushes, you have 100% black, for example, but you yeah. can tone down the, um, the flow. And I do that so that I have that, you know, on paper look, you know. Um, nice. So I, I, when, I, when I ink uh, by computer, I really feel like I'm inking on paper. Um, I have no problem doing the tablet and looking at the screen, you know, like, I, that's not a problem for me. I've been doing it for so long. Yeah. But, um, but when it comes to comic book art, uh, I kind of want to have an original. Yeah. Uh, especially in Norway and Denmark, I can sell them t 10 times the price that I can sell them here. Like here, a page for $25. Friends Bob, you can sell it 250 over there. So um, nice. I keep my pages for Europe. I don't sell yeah, them here. I, I th maybe we could talk a little bit about that. So we talked before the show a little bit of the differences between European comics and kind of their attitude towards comics uh, versus sort of in America and how you had mentioned in in Europe that the artists is, are the stars where yeah. here it's the it's the character that's the right, star. Right, right. I mean if there, like if, if you have big, like I'll, I'll take one of my favorite artists like Neil Adams right mm -hmm. but if it wasn't for Batman he wouldn't be known here as Neil Adams if yeah. it wasn't for Batman in Europe he could be drawing Joe the Blow and it, wow. if his drawings were like he, he does with Batman but it's not Batman he would be totally uh, revered as as the artist he is deserves to be um here it has a lot to do with the character you're drawing you become neil adams because you're doing batman yeah and it's kind of sad yeah yeah you and know? and not to get on too much of a tangent but like um it's it you see that when you go to conventions with the fan art i mean people yeah. gravitate to, 
like at, at conventions, I try to, I've got my own original IP that I'm trying to push. And it's, it's difficult when, and you know, you see every, people around you doing fan art and mm -hmm. maybe not even as great an artist as maybe mm -hmm. the stuff that you're putting out, but it's just like that stuff sells because people, yeah. they, they gravitate to around the characters, characters they know. Yeah. And they don't really care like, who does the, the fan art. The, the thing is this is I'm not against that by the way. And, 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 Actually, oh, that's cool what you just posted. Um, it, I, I like that. I like that people can do fan art. And, you know, uh, legally, they're not allowed to normally, you know? Yeah. The uh, Warner Brothers, you know, Nickelodeon, they all kind of turn the, the head around because there's two reasons for that. One is you, you, you have fans. Let fans be fans, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and secondly, uh, good art, because there's some really good art that's fan art out there. Uh, that uh, if they make some money out of it, they're not going to take money out of the pockets of the uh, DC Comics and so forth, and they're going to help uh, advertise. It's actually free advertising, you know. Yeah. So yeah. It, there's a little bit of a, eh, you know, if you go, if you become a real star of fan art and make a lot of money, then you might go into some problems. Yeah, because <laughs> then but you're you, kind of you dipping just, into the coffers yeah. of the creators. But then you can still have a deal with them. Like yeah. you can do it, but then you'll only get a percentage of it. Yeah. I the, and I totally understand that, and I'm, I mean, I, I tend to agree with you. The only part where it gets it gets difficult, I think, is it's not necessarily the IP owners, but it's the licensors that are paying to license those products, mm -hmm. and other people just do it for free. I mean, so the, those yeah. are the people that are going to have beef because they, I mean, why do we have to pay thousands of dollars to license these characters when mm -hmm. other people just do it for free? You know? Yeah. So yeah, it's it, that's. That can see I that that might be the where you know yeah fan art is a major problem but well yeah, it, so it, it's a it's a double edged sword and um, I don't think any big company is ready to fight this to right, the point right. of uh, taking uh, them their fan art out uh, um, and it's obvious at comic cons where fan art is the the most is, uh, is the most of what you see. Comic Cons, uh, whether it's uh, figurines, uh, necklaces, or big giant posters of characters that don't belong to the ones who draw it, um, it's uh, I, I'm not against it. I mean, if somebody who did that with Romeo, like my little baby character, I don't know if you saw it in my uh, f portfolio, but Romeo uh, was in a women's magazine, a very uh, prestigious one in France called Maxi, and it was a, a weekly strip for 25 years. Oh wow. I yeah, did that for 25 years. You see that little kid, that little baby? So, yeah, that, saw, Ro so Romeo was, um, uh, and it was a very well-paid comic strip. It was probably the most well-paid comic strip in, in Europe. Uh, we had a killer. Uh, we had a guy from the King Features that was our lawyer for that uh, deal. And oh, wow. We got a lot of money out of that one for 25 years. So, you know, um, that's what it is, you know. I did T-shirts for ten years. We were the top of the uh, top seller in France. It was so prominent. Our T-shirts were so well sold that we would sit at a terrace in Paris, sipping coffee and counting how many T-shirts we'd see. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> so I had my heyday. I was on TV on primetime TV in France, and so I had my heyday. But that is not the case anymore. <laughs> for now. So in in that case, though, that strip that you were working on, that was that was your own creation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, like, you know, the, I think this might tie into some of what you were talking about with Europe versus the U.S., but, like, one of the things that I find really um, encouraging and, and nice about seeing French comics and French cartooning is that, for one thing, like, the breadth of the, the topics that are covered by mm -hmm. comics have just been so ahead of... Oh yeah, ahead of the U.S. and 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 I think the U.S. is is kind of catching up at least mm -hmm. with you know there have been it is, it is. moments, yeah. but um, also just with the creator owned uh, you know work like you were saying where I think you know in the U.S. it's like if you're doing Batman then that can kind of put you on the map, but mm -hmm. if you're doing your own creation, you know it's a much slimmer game oh, yeah. like you know, who, who gets recognized and stuff. You're only lucky yeah. when you get a TV show like, like, uh, the living dead or, you know, I mean, um, what's it called? I don't watch it cause I, I hate walking that dead. show. The walking walking dead. dead. Yeah. I'm not a fan yeah. at all, but, uh, I'm more a fan of the comic book, but I, the show just, I, I don't like it. 
Um, uh, it's an yeah, actor I, thing. I don't like the actors. Those, the, Except the for top, one. Yeah, I mean, the people at the top are, are doing well, but it's like, it's very hard to get to that point. <laughs> yeah, you have to do a comic book. You have to create a comic book that will be a movie or TV series worthy. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's got to be a property. that. Yeah, it's yeah. got to be a property that uh, smells like money. And... Uh, it's a, it's a, I mean, I will take it on me. I was going to say it's our own fault. Let's say it's my own fault that I don't have one out there because I have ideas, but I, I get lazy in, in, you know, in, in going forward. Like, there's one thing I'm not lazy about. I'm, I'll show it to you. Uh, I'm trying to get my um, – I'm not used to this double screen thing, to be honest with you. Well, but while you're doing that, I wanted to mention the. It, I think it looks like the the link to uh, Vincent's Dropbox portfolio is, it's like in. I think it's in the chat, but it's like grayed out. Yeah. So if it stays there, I think what you can do if you want to see it, I think if you just cut co co like copy yeah. it. Yeah, just and then copy paste it. Yeah, or you just you just it uh, underline it. Window. And then you you double click and it'll say uh, go to the website. And then oh, okay, okay, yeah. So that should be in the chat. You just have to yeah. kind of do a I'm little work around there. Well, I was trying to. Are you showing us Lemon Crush It or something else? No, I'm going to show it. you. I'm going to show you. But, 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 and let me see if I can find it. Um, yeah, Lemon Crush It is 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 my big project right now. Uh, I don't know if it's going to flow, if it's going to go well or not. Uh, I have well, a. Talk about that after you show me what you what yeah, you're going to show. I want to show you what. I, sometimes you have to be. Um, I'm sorry about this. I, I'm. No I'm worries. Old, no I'm worries. forgetting things. I forget names. We're we're very we're very uh, used yeah. to technical difficulties and things like and that. Should, but last, me, my last, technical last difficulty is here. Search. You know, that's where my difficult my difficulty is. And that's the reason why you're not seeing my face because I can't. My video is so bad still, which I'm I'm in the <laughs> middle of. And if anyone cares, I'm getting. I've got all my parts for my new computer. Hopefully, have that built. But then I'll probably have to get a new. Let me show this. Uh, I'm not going to download it yet, quite yet. But let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, and make sure when it's on screen that you just talk. Cause yeah. So uh, I'm going to open this uh, so you see what it is. But people have been asking me this as far as Hungary, you know, uh, Europe, uh, Asia, and I don't know why my we my see it on screen. Huh? Are we, are we supposed to just see it on screen not right yet, now? Not or? yet. Okay. Uh, okay. Second, I, I don't know where I, where I am. Here I am. So, uh, so um, I'm going to do. It. People want the T-shirt without a uh, slogan. I do have a slogan on on creativity. I have a few of them, uh, and I'm going to be um, trying to get this. Let me see if I can show you the the actual mm -hmm. picture. Do you see something there? Yeah. Yeah. I see okay. your signature. Okay, let me see if I can do this and this. There, can you see it full screen now? Yep. So that's the idea, you see. Uh, it's it, it, Everybody likes my signature, and they want me to do T-shirts. Cool. So, you know, all of a sudden I say to myself, hey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make T-shirts. But instead of having um, people just do T-shirts for me, uh, I am going to um, try to see if I can have a contract with uh, Target. Oh, cool! Yeah, yeah. Because people, I mean, and then people say, "But nobody knows your name. Nobody cares." I said, "Nobody gives a care about Nike either. They don't buy the T-shirt, the swoosh for the shoes. They don't think, oh, I love the shoes. Let me buy the T-shirt.' My daughter, she hates Coca-Cola. She hates any pop, and she loves the T-shirts of Coca-Cola because she likes the logo. So it's not about you know what it means. It's it's about what it looks like. And yeah. we're going to try to um, uh, distribute this a little bit everywhere. And uh, we'll see what happens, you know. Uh, but if you don't, if you're not stubborn about it, if you don't, you know, you have to kind of want to do it, you know. Yeah, and it's just it's it's a brand. I mean, I've seen so many things that I'm like, well, what is that? What is that symbol? What does that symbol mean? Right. And then right, I'll, right. I'll like Google it, and it's like, oh, it's a skateboarder, or oh, it's right. this. And yeah, I mean, if, if you, you like the symbol, symbol, it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to get back to my video now, and I I'm not sure how to get that. Oh, there. Am I back? Uh -huh. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Good. But the, All right. Yeah. So it was just to show you that it looks good as a T-shirt, and I have a lot of T-shirt experience, and I I know when something may 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 sell, yeah. and so far um, I think uh, it's worth me fighting for that. So that's what I'm going to do. But that's basically licensing with with a logo, really. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm trying to. I, I mean, so far I haven't 
I haven't got to the point where I can get people like I, I sell like T-shirts, but it's mm -hmm. I can't if I just put my logo on the T-shirt. So yeah. far, I can't. I haven't been able to get people to buy that particular. You know why? Thing. It's because people tell you. Go on this site, you know, like t-shirts.com. I don't know what the heck, you know, and they say you'll sell, you know, hundreds of t-shirts like that. But I don't want to sell hundreds of t-shirts. I want to smell, sell millions of t-shirts. So <laughs> why? So I, when I taught at the SVA at, in Manhattan, I would say to, to budding artists, I would say, look, don't go up the ladder. That, that makes no sense. You'll always end up lower than you should if you go up the top ladder. Now, if you go on the top, you'll be bumped down. People won't say, oh, great. Well, they may, but I mean, you go to the top ladder, you get yeah. bumped down, but you'll always be higher than when you start from the bottom. Yeah. So when people say you should go to t-shirts.com or whatnot, I say, no, I'm going to go to Target. I'm going to go to Masomo and I'm going to try to get a contract with them because they're the best middle, middle um, range. Uh, it's not Walmart and it's not Gucci either. <laughs> you know, it's just Target, but Masomo has great quality t-shirts. I buy them. And I would rather have my, my logo on them. But for that, you have to you have to have the balls to do it, you know. Yeah. And don't listen to what people say. There's so many sites out there that tell you sell your jewelry on this site, you know, and you're so happy because you get 30 people who buy your jewelry. Well, fuck that. You know? Yeah. Go to the top. Get a contract with somebody who does jewelry a lot, you know, and you know, do it you know and 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 if it's if it's if it doesn't work it doesn't work but at least you tried and and i think that's something i i don't want to regret when i die is that i didn't try harder yeah. you know hard because we're all artists and the problem with us artists is we think that you know we're artists we're almost condemned to be you know starving artists um but that's that's a very negative attitude i mean you know you got to think uh, commercially and it's not like, you know, oh, you don't want to sell out. Well, then don't sell out, you know? But then don't bitch if you don't have enough money to pay your rent, you know? Yeah. Well, it's funny. So you better sell out. <laughs> that's, a great, that's a great topic because, like, what's weird is, um, and Scott and I have had this conversation, but it's like I, I freelanced for 15 years or something, mm -hmm. and uh, which is nothing compared to, like, your your vast experience in it, you know? Uh, you know, don't, but, don't think that my experience is that vast. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> but but what I'm saying is like um, I what initially appealed to me about freelance was like it, it is kind of fun being you feel like a gun for hire you kind of show up it's surprising um, and when it's good you know when it's a feast period it's great oh yeah um, and sometimes it's overwhelming and and you know I I'm a bit of a type A personality so I'd catch myself working a little too much because I just mm -hmm. didn't like turning down projects you know. Mm -hmm. Because like once again, all it takes is like one famine period, and you're like, okay, mm -hmm. I, I definitely will take anything that comes, you know. Which is also <laughs> dangerous. Yeah. Oh, it was totally dangerous. But um, what I found after like 15 years, like the big appeal to it, the biggest thing was like, then I can work on my own stuff whenever yeah. I want. Yeah. And what I found was I didn't um, work on my own stuff hardly ever because, like I said, the feast and famine conundrum where I would catch myself um you know like either searching for the next job or uh or like you know just basically like working on taking everything during a feast so um it's it's kind of this weird conundrum where i've actually found that i have more time i i just took like a an in-house gig as an art director and now i i, I actually have not more time, but more of a schedule. So I, I can actually, I have my hours where I can work on my own art. Um, but, but I think you're right. Like in the sense of your advice to people is pretty dead on because I think if I were to be like, I want to work on autobiographical, uh, graphic novel that doesn't stay to one style. Like it alternates between like this weird kind of rubber hosey, style and like a super realistic style and it it's auto bio and it may not have mass appeal um if i were to just be like okay that's going to be my thing um and i bank everything on that like you know that's the art for art sake thing and it's like good luck mm. paying my rent you know like or my mortgage on that mm. so it's it i don't know it's interesting because it's like the I, I guess what I'm, what I, why I'm mentioning that is that everything you were saying kind of rings true where I think that first off, yeah, you do have to aim high 
and, and, and second off, like, yeah, definitely, um, you know, yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with selling. Like there's yeah. a difference between selling and selling out, you know, selling out would be like, um, compromising your principles. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like if, if I hired Scott to do a comic that or art that was unethical to mm -hmm. him and he took the paycheck that's selling out, yeah. you know, but if it's like, you know, um, work you want to take like but there's nothing wrong with that like it yeah. um and in fact like that's kind of how you make a living and it's smart i love what you said about top down that's a really good way of describing yeah. it because you can't shoot too low um i've never gotten anywhere in my career just based on you know aiming for the bottom mm -hmm. rung like you got to start high and unfortunately that's going to lead to some disappointments right because you'll yeah. get shot down occasionally but you get so many, so many better opportunities getting shot down and working your way down than working your way up. And the way you framed that was really cool because I, I hadn't really, uh, for some reason, I hadn't really thought of like just simplifying like what you're, what you're saying to the level of what you said where it's just working well, the it's top. Because you know, it's by smart. experience, by the way, it's, I, I am not, it's not just words. I mean, I came uh, in France. I had a series called Les Formidables. It was with little ants and you can see it in my... Uh, you can see it in my, I, I'm probably going to rework on that, by the way. Um, so I did these little ants that were a success for a while, and then it just dropped. Um, I was in France living with my first ex-wife there. Well, she wasn't ex-wife at the time. We're still friends, actually, great friends. And um, I said, I'm going to go to New York and see if I can work for DC Comics. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, hey, I'm going to take a ticket to New York from France, south of France, and I'll be doing Batman, you know? Yeah, I did it. I went straight to the top. I was helped by. Um, uh, I went to the Warner Brothers store and asked uh, one of the sellers there if he knew anybody that worked at DC Comics, and he said yes. And he gave me the name of um, Eric Dosher, which was uh, a top-notch uh, and still is. But I mean, he was uh, one already a top-notch uh, in uh, the Batman uh, licensing stuff, and he was kind enough to see what I could do and to you know take it on him to present me to his boss. You know, That's um, and in the moment I saw that my cartoon, my comic book was going down in France and being hired by DC Comics took about two weeks. That's impressive. And and like the neat thing is, like, once again, if you hadn't gone to New York, you know, mm -hmm. like, would that opportunity have no. ever showed up? You no, know? It, it, the, the thing that why I came to New York is because from France, I sold a story to Mad Magazine. And so I had already an excuse to get there and kind of a hope, you know, yeah. get it. But you have to be your best producer. If you don't believe in yourself enough to create a comic book and go see the highest bidder for it, then you're not going to make it. You have to believe in yourself. And unfortunately, yeah. as artists, we have that problem is that we are a little bit too unsure of what we do and we're not sure it's going to work. No, take your stuff and go see uh, Random House, go see um, DC Comics, go see Marvel. You want to yeah. create a new superhero? Create a new superhero. Go see Stan Lee, for heaven's sake. Tell him that you're willing to share with him the credit. You will have. You will be the most, you know, well-paid guy in in, in in the next future ten years. And and by the time you die, your kids will be rich. So it's it's you can't go and and start saying, oh, I know this publisher. He only takes like five thousand dollars, and you get to publish a hundred books. Fuck that. I'm sorry, yeah. I, I, maybe I'm not allowed to swear on that. No, you're, you're, no. You're um, it's just, you know, no, 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 don't, don't. There's so many uh, uh, websites out there that will produce your book, do your T-shirts, you know, uh, sell your jewelry. You know what they're there for? They're there to make money for themselves. And they're never going to promote you to the highest ground. You're the only one that can do that. Yeah. And that's a, that actually ties into something um, I've been thinking about with this because when I've gone to conventions in the past, and this is a while ago, I always would promote like pretty much anything I did. Mm -hmm. So I'd have like prints of posters. I'd have T-shirts. I was in a T-shirt game for quite a while, mm -hmm. and um, and what I what I found was like that people would walk away really happy with the print they got but they would not remember my name like right. yeah. they were buying it because you know they liked um 
like one of my more popular prints is like based on Kermit the Frog, and mm -hmm. it's like a an X ray of Kermit the Frog with a hand. Oh, I think I saw that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's. And but it's like that yeah. that um that image like mm -hmm. is is really still widely all over the place online, but mm -hmm. it's not like nobody's attributing that to my name. Well, it's like what's and, her, what's her name? <laughs> I feel bad now that I don't remember her name, but yeah. that wonderful artist that I saw at the Comic Con last year. That did uh, that did that famous poster of all the princess of uh, Disney princesses making faces. She had no credit for it, and it's like all over the internet. Yeah, you know, yeah. all the girls, you know, sticking their tongue out and making <laughs> funny faces. And she's a genius. She, her her art is just absolutely magnificent. I don't have her name in the tip of my tongue, but yeah. that's my one of my problems. That I never forget. Give me a second. Uh, I'm I gonna always... get something to show you guys. Sure. Awesome. Just a second. Yeah, I think um, like just just uh, to, to you know keep the conversation going while that's uh, happening. I think that the um, the the thing that I yeah, I'm, so that's, that's oh, the thing. You know, I'm back. Sorry. Awesome. Did you want to finish what you were saying, Josh? Oh, I was just saying like I I think that the the thing that I'm I'm aiming for now is to try to actually like when I'm when I'm finished with this book. Like, um, and I've talked to Scott about this, it, but I think this is what I'm going to show. Mm -hmm. And if that leads to a loss at the convention, that leads to a loss at the convention. But when people walk away, they're going to walk away knowing I'm connected to this property and not, there's no marketing confusion or branding confusion. Um, because I feel like before I was just throwing anything in the kitchen sink. Mm -hmm. And so if that's what you're putting, at least this is my own scenario but it's like if if that's what i was putting out then of course you know people might like some of my art but they're not going to necessarily remember my name you know and i think i think it's different if like what you're working on has a distinctive look or a yeah. distinctive style um mm -hmm. yeah but what, what were you going to show yeah i was just going to show uh the, the the thickness and the beauty of the books that you get in france right that is this so is what I, this is my aunt books right this one won an award at in switzerland but you see, it's it's beautifully done. It's uh, also uh, threaded. It, it, the books are threaded together, like you know, really nice posh books, and they cost about ten dollars over there. But you see, people they collect them. This is Romeo that you saw in my. Um, mm -hmm. okay, this is the book Romeo. But you see, when you put them side by side, and then completely different, the one I did for Denmark. Yeah. yeah so, uh, so are those? Are but you know, the like thing the... is, even though it's in Denmark and the other ones are in France, look. They are meant to be in a in your library. That's are they, is there a standard size then? Yeah, or mm -hmm. standard yeah, size. It, you you have, you have two or three here. standard size. Yeah, you have the standard size that I just showed you, and you have uh, books like uh, Tintin that are a little bit bigger. Okay. And Tintin is. You were talking about uh, how difficult it is to do a simple drawing. The most difficult character to draw in the world is Tintin. And why is that? Because he's he's just one oval face. With his right. little hair up, uh, you, uh, I defy anybody, on the first unless they trace it to do a Tintin. I defy anybody to do Tintin. Uh, I've seen the best artists in the world try to do Tintin, and it looks like their Tintin, but it does not look like Hergé's right. Tintin. Hergé, by the way, was the first guy I ever wrote to who wrote me back. Oh, that's amazing! Uh, he died years ago, of course, you know, decades ago. But yeah, he he's one of the greatest cartoonist i mean like his, his, yeah. his style is yeah. deceptively yeah. simple he doesn't it's, hide anything well which is scary. what i like about him to me is the best thing about tintin is that instead of having like here in america the camera here the camera there the big shot the hand in the front and stuff he has his camera on a tripod through the whole comic book they're actually they walk on the line of the the, the panel yeah most of the time and that makes for the best storytelling ever because you're not distracted by the drawing you're in the story and i think that herge is the best cartoonist in the world because of that because he's a storyteller rather than uh, even though his art is very art deco it's very beautiful it has a style yeah. unique on its own but it's so simple but you used the word earlier deceptively simple he's impossible to draw you can draw yeah. captain haddock or, you know, pretty much okay, but you, I, I guarantee you, you will not after your tenth try get Tintin right. Ever. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, I so 
I, I actually am curious about European publishers. So you still work um, for, for publishers mm -hmm. in Europe? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how does that work? Because like I've realized too, and this is just something I've considered, is like the genre I'm working in probably has a little more possibility in places mm -hmm. like France than it would here. Um, is, is it a very similar process where you'd have to, um, yeah. like for the bigger guys, like have a, have a literary agent or like, how, how did you go about that? I've, um, I've never had thing? a literary, I, I've ne never had an agent. I had an agent for about six months and I did more work than she did. So I, I don't <laughs> um, no, um, it's, it's hard to get in unless you have something original. If you have something original, you can get in how it works financially. It's very simple. They will pay you what they call advance on royalties. In other words, they will pay you, if you write your own story and draw your, everything you do yourself, you'll get about $11,000 to work with, to do your comic book. It's called Advance on Royalties. Yeah, they will take that $11,000 off the royalties. Of course. Yeah. That are paid every six months. But if you tank and you don't sell one book, those $11,000 you keep. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. Okay. So that's how they work. It's very dry cut. It's very simple. Uh, there is also a crisis of comic books over there, apparently, for my friends. They, they tell me it's hard. And it's hard because I, I'm, right now I'm trying to get back. I, I write in French. My French is my first language. Yeah. So I, I, I still write in French, in French uh, for French comic books. But uh, right now it's not easy to get back in. I, I tried to get back in a few weeks ago, and um, they wanted me to draw uh, stories on Trump. And I told them, you know, Trump doesn't make me laugh very much. So I, I, I wouldn't be the writer like for Mad Magazine. It, it's like a Mad Magazine kind of magazine called Fluid Glacial in France. It's the most prestigious one you can get into. Yeah. Uh, but um, I had to d decline because there's one thing you cannot do with any editor anywhere in the world is say you'll do something and not do it. Oh, of right. course. Yeah. And by the way, if I can, if somebody here is listening that's a budding cartoonist and wants to get in the business, let me give you one advice it it matters less how well you draw than how good you are on deadlines yes oh yeah so it doesn't matter if you do a masterpiece but if you're two weeks late you'll never work again yeah because the word will will go as fast as a forest fire so yeah. you say if you can't do it if you get sick you call them right away that's what saved me with dc comics i i always worked with them because if i got sick and i said i can't do it i would call right away and say you can put another artist on it. It doesn't matter. It's just I'm sick. I can't do it in the deadline. I'm yes. sorry. Generally, they don't change artists. They will say, well, you know, just get better, you know. But uh, if they have a problem themselves with, uh, with um, you know, a uh, deadline, then you're giving them the possibility to jump and, and to save their, their own asses, you know. Yeah. yeah they and have their own problems. So uh, never, ever be late on a job. Yeah, I, I can definitely Ever. attest to that. Um, just as an art director, like I hire freelancers yeah. every once in a while. And that is the biggest to yeah. me. I don't give, I give multiple chances to artists who have issues on all kinds of things. But the one thing, because especially because I have an in house staff of artists too. Yeah. And so if you're late, you just screwed over our entire in house you staff. You can't do that. I mean, because that means all my guys now have to stay over time and not see their kids because a freelancer didn't deliver. And that's, that's, that's a huge, yeah. And, and uh, that goes for pretty much any industry. Yes, it um, does. In, in illustration. It does, but the problem with artists is that uh, if you're like me, you're a yeah. freaking perfectionist. Yeah. So you're going to, you're going to spend time getting it look better than being on time yeah. and that you can't, well, it doesn't happen to be, I, I, I did one mistake like 40 years ago and I never did that mistake again. Yeah. Uh, All it takes I, is once. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and it, I didn't get punished for it, but uh, because the editor, I was only 18 and he yeah. understood, but um, uh, you can't do that. If you're going to be in a comic book business, oh, yeah. especially if you're going into licensing comic books, you better be on your word. If you're not on your word, if you think you might not make it, say no better to yeah. lose a job than to lose them all yeah yeah and and the thing about open communication too because i think yeah. most people are forgiving of like a cold or you know if you get massively yeah. sick it's just one of those things of like you know if you keep something too close to the vest you can end up really kind yeah. of 
And, you know, and if the editor the understands that you understand the editor and you're giving him a way out to get another artist on the job to finish it faster than you yes. can, uh, you will be recompensed tenfold. You'll get yeah. more work by that editor because he can trust you. Yes. Yeah. And that's that's the massive thing is like it's all about trust. I, yeah. I had a friend who draws 100 billion times better than I do. Or it's because he takes more time. All I can say, he, he would take a week to do a page. <laughs> can you imagine living as a comic oh. book artist with one week for a page? If you don't do a page in two days maximum, you're, you're, you don't even start. You know what I mean? It's not going to happen. Oh, yeah. Doing and you're saying stuff. just that's like you know those complicated focus? Pages? Yeah. You, you, you saw those, those pages of Denmark, right? Yeah. The maximum was two days for a page like that. Maximum. Yeah. And that's you know, taking my time, you know. If anything SpongeBob would be a page a day. If you can't do a page a day, you know, you, 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 it doesn't matter if you're a good artist. You have to be a quick artist. Yeah. And, and and unfortunately, schools will never tell you that. You'll go to art schools, and it's all about how you draw. It's never about how fast you draw. And unfortunately, my friends, if you're in the comic book, you want to be in the comic book industry. The faster you are, you are, the better you're going to get work. Yeah. yeah, and also the more it's going to be worth your while because yes. you know your page rate. If right. you're if you're going past a day, you know page rates in comics, you know aren't aren't the greatest. So if you're if you're taking more than a you know like more than like four, yeah. like if three days, and now you're kind of losing money. And yeah. so it's like the quicker you are, also the more you make an hour. You know what the difference is between an amateur and a professional. What, what do you what do you think the difference is? <laughs> I'm curious. The difference is one makes a living out of it and the other one doesn't. In other yeah. words, I know amateurs that draw better than some professionals. Oh yeah. But they just take their time and they, they do it for fun. A professional is an amateur that makes a living out of it. Yeah. I, I feel myself being a professional when I get out of the grocery store and I have heavy bags because of my drawings for SpongeBob or Scooby Doo. And uh -huh. then I feel like a professional. But when I work, I feel like an amateur. Yeah, that's that's great. That's that's honestly um, the I think that's one of the big things that clicked for me at one point when I was first approaching like editors and stuff and trying to get work in in, in illustration was more of my background. Um, but it's just there's something that clicks when you have that realization that uh, that like nobody knows what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. And it's kind of freeing because of the fact that like all the guys that, you know, as a cartoonist, you grow up like really loving or, at, you know, illustrators you see, like you go to the store, you see art on books all over the place. Every single person there had a moment where they had no connections. They got out there and they, they hustled and made it happen. It's a, man, that's, that's really great advice. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's interesting. Do you, so have you ever reached a level though, where you're like the, the, the amateur feeling goes away? <laughs> no, no, I still have it. That's interesting. When I started, uh, that's... even when I start my own comic book with my own style that I've been doing for 40 years, yeah, I am, I'm a, a, the first critique of what I do and I'm always unsure that I'm doing it right. But it, I think that helps you to do it right. If you're, if you're so sure, I mean, let's face it. We all know these cartoonists or these uh, authors that think they're the best and they suck balls. Yeah. They suck balls. <laughs> totally. You see a kid that comes to you and says, I'm, I'm a better cartoonist than you are. And they might have a drawing or two that's better than what you do. But you look at their overall work and they suck balls. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's, it's just that's the way it is. You know? I, I, yes, I'm unsure. I, I, the drawing I just showed you of uh, Ariana, you know, um, I, I, I didn't think, you know, I started off, I said, I'm, I'm going to go to, uh, with a picture that I know her. And I'm going to do that picture, but I'm going to do it freehand in, in my way and stuff. Um, but I started it thinking, oh, man, this is going to be shit. It's not going to be a good one. And I like how it turned out. Yeah. But I don't take, you know, I, I appreciate the nice words I get from it on Instagram. I just put it out last night, in the middle of the night. And um, people are liking it. Of course, I'm getting fans from, you know, little girls that like Ariana and stuff. And so I want to, to respect that, you know. Um, uh, 
I'm personally a fan of more rock and roll stuff, and but I, I think she does great stuff. But uh, uh, my my goal in doing that drawing was not just because I'm a fan of hers, which I am, but it, it was because I thought thought this will please everybody out there, the, the kids out there. Um, so is that selling out? I don't think so. I think that I did it sincerely. And when I was drawing her, I was thinking, man, did I get those eyes right? Did I get her mouth right? You know. Um, so yeah, I'm always unsure. I was going to go back to the the guy that you were talking about, that uh, the kid or whatever that that says that you know he draws better than you, and and mm -hmm. you might have one nice piece. Um, but there's a flip side to that where I think that that kind of goes along with what you were talking about as far as meeting deadlines. And I think if you have the confidence, um, I think that can take you pretty far too. Yeah. Now, obviously, you don't want to, you know. I think I think most artists I know are, are fairly humble, especially when it comes to their work. But yeah. but there's but you can still have that. You can still say, yeah. I mean, I'm just not in my game. I'm at the top of my game. I, I mean, I still need to work on stuff. But you can still have confidence that you could get the job done. Yeah, you know, yeah. I think if you have that, I, that's that's it's all it's 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 that professional. And the one thing that I always say is that that. Um, a mediocre artist who's a great businessman is going to do way oh, better yes. than the best artist in the world who doesn't have any is not business savvy. I, you're right because I'm a really I'm a horrible businessman and I would be a lot better off today if I was a bit of. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That's it's um, it's it what what to me like there there's a couple things I want to unpack a little bit like one is. Um, the idea of kind of professional. And I think like part of why it's so important, like even if you don't feel like a professional, like the, the beauty is um, like, I, like, you know, especially freelancing, you end up in these weird situations like where you'll like, I, I remember my first time storyboarding mm -hmm. and it was intimidating and I had to go on site and I'd never storyboarded before. But the last thing I was going to do was show up and be like, I've never storyboarded before. I don't know what I'm doing, and I'm freaked out by this. I went in, I unpacked, and I did the best I could, and then I figured out how to storyboard. And it's, you know, so it's kind of like that maintaining that professionalism of, like, I think we all have that moment of, of doubt, but also maintaining that professionalism, like, if you're hired to go work on someone's roof, go to their house and work on the roof, you know, like, yeah, that's, that's, and, you know, maybe you haven't done a roof before, but you figure it out, you know? <laughs> you know the, the owns, yeah. The guy who owns his house, he could be an amateur roofer and do it himself. Mm -hmm. um, usually you call a uh, professional because you want to have it well done. You know? Yeah. Um, and uh, professional that's his job. So I don't not feel like a professional. Don't get me wrong. When I get a, when I start a job, yeah. I don't feel like an amateur in the whole sense of the word. Mm -hmm. But I do have the same um, insecurities as an amateur. And when I say it's hard to explain, it's not, I'm, I'm not insecure. I know I can do it. Yeah. But as I'm drawing, I'm insecure about how good I am at doing it. Yes. I know I can do it. I'm a pro. Yes. I've been paid for 40 years to yes. do this job. And it's to do it like funnies or to do it super realistic. Yeah. That's my job. So I don't feel insecure about being able to do it. I'm just a very much an amateur, an insecure amateur as I'm doing it. Yeah, so no, that makes, that's a perfect way of describing it because, and, and I've said this on this show before too, where I, I, I think that um, like the difference for me now than when I was starting is that I've had enough moments where I've been hired to draw something I've never drawn before and it's intimidating and weird. And then I've tackled it and accomplished it and then kind of learned from that. And it's like, you have enough of those moments to where it get, and I can't even imagine at the level you're at because like you've had so much, so much work that now I'm sure you're even less so intimidated when there's a new thing that you haven't it's drawn weird. because you've had enough new things, you know, yes, that you haven't drawn. But this is the thing, though. I, I, I look at all the books. I, I've got books of SpongeBob. I got, you know, yeah. my, my comic books I just showed you. Yeah. I have uh, 10 of those, by the way, uh, in France. Uh, I've always been disappointed by a book. Yeah. I always look at it and I think I suck balls. I yeah. could have done it like this, I could have done it like that. 
And then years after, I'm talking 10, 20 years after, I look at the same book. I said, wow, that was actually better than what I do now. Yeah, I've done that too. You know, yeah. I look at it. I said, boy, that was my top. That I was at my, my like that Romeo. Did you see in my, my portfolio, the Romeo? Yep. Yeah. When I look at that strip, I have the original here. I look at it. I said, I never drew as well as I did there. But when it came out, I was like, oh, I could do better, you know? Yeah. You're, and and you're now I'm it. doing stuff and I'm like, actually, no, it's pretty good. And then I look at it when it's already published and I'm like, oh my gosh, I should have done it like this. Um, <laughs> I'm my worst critic. Yeah. But you know, you know where I'm proud of what I do is with fans. Fans yeah. make me proud. They're the ones that give me that, hmm, I'm not that bad after all, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, the fans, uh, I have so much respect for them because they're the ones that are my, they psychologically help the artist. You know, uh, I was a stand-up comedian too, so in France. And so- Wait, you did stand-up? Yeah, and I'm yeah. going to do stand-up again. I, I'm almost finished my first English speaking stand-up that I'm gonna do in Phoenix. I'll tell you about it. And Phoenix. Yeah, and you might, that th doesn't that tie into Lemon Crush It? Cause I know we're, yes. we're not quite at an hour and a half yet, but I definitely want you to uh, pitch Lemon Crush It, tell everyone what it's about, but yeah. you know. I, 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 if you go on my Lemon Crush It uh, YouTube, but there's one video that talks about it. Uh, but I have a secret video there where I did my first tryouts. It's going to be a radio program where I, I'm the host and I talk like a host, right? And I get callers. And the callers are characters that are in the comic book in the PDF file. You can click on the PDF file, it brings you right to the, uh, YouTube. I think it's the first time I see this. I'm not sure I'm the first one to do it, but I, I haven't seen it done before. Uh, and then I do a skit. And it's like, for example, I have one skit where there's a, a clown that calls. Uh, and he's like, uh, I say to him, I say, uh, okay, what's your name? Well, hi, I'm, uh, I'm Duty the Clown. Because <laughs> I used to do voice actor too. And so uh, I say, yes, so what's your problem? Well, uh, I don't make any money. <laughs> I'm poor. I can't eat with what I do. I can't find work. And I say, well, uh, that maybe... Uh, Maybe it's your makeup. Does your makeup uh, scare kids? What kind of makeup do you have? Well, I don't have any makeup. <laughs> I'm allergic to makeup. <laughs> you know, so he ends up being allergic to makeup. He doesn't like uh, flashy clothes. He has a size nine as feet, so he has small feet. Basically, it's the guy in the street that you wouldn't even look at, but he's a <laughs> professional clown. So that's the skit. And, and, and you'll have that from a clown from the Lemon Crush It comic book. Uh, so so uh, it's going to be uh, a mix of it's going to be Lemon Crush It is a PDF comic book that you'll download and there will be links on the comic book, the PDF file, where you click and you'll have a little skit that will be under five minutes and hopefully more often under three minutes. Um, uh, I can send you personally uh, through um, the, uh, the, uh, the first video I did, which is very imperfect and it's long. It's, it's long. Like it, it's. It, it was very ad-libbed and it wasn't well done, but it was to show myself, you know, what can I do, what kind of stuff I can do. That's awesome. That's That sounds really cool. Um, that's kind of new, I think. I mean, I haven't... Uh... I think that's so amazing that you do cartooning and and, and were a comic because I, I always see overlap. Like, um, yeah. Yeah. like and I'm a musician, too. I had, I had two bands, so... We nice. all, I think most <laughs> artists, I see, I, I'm not surprised. Yeah. Most of us are either in a band, are actors, you know, or, or, or in my case, what I loved most was theater. I, I, I've acted in, in shows and movies in France. It's boring as hell. You just wait around and it's just boring. I don't like it. I like That's, the stage. I need the applaud. I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm a ham. Yeah. I need the applause. The, you know? That's the one thing. Uh, yeah. Well, so as far as the musician things, that always just amazes me and makes me a little jealous because I'm not musically inclined. But it seems like all of my artist friends are. And it's like no fair. You get to be a great artist and you can play guitar and you play, and you can play piano and whatever thing. But, but so, you know, but <laughs> that depends of your taste. You know, I'll tell you something, my friend. You, uh, we all have talents, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I don't want to lie and say everybody is as great as everybody else. I'm just saying everybody has talents. The problem is having the, the taste of your talent. For example, yes. you may very well be the new Pavarotti, but maybe you don't like opera. So you'll never know that you are gifted for opera because mm. you don't even like opera. And that's the, the gift of, of when we say we're gifted with our talents is because we're gifted not only with the talent, but with the taste yes. and the passion of that talent. 
Yeah. So if you don't play an instrument, maybe it's because you didn't try, or maybe because you have a, you're an actor, or maybe it's yeah. because you are a stand-up comedian, but you haven't really pursued that because it's not really what you want to do. So yeah, the that, luck of the that. draw is that. Because I yeah. took a couple of guitar lessons, and it just I just didn't I didn't put the effort into it like I would with artwork. Yeah. And so maybe I didn't care as much about it. Otherwise, maybe I would have. But as, as far as, you know, I, I don't know if I consider myself an actor, but, I've, you know, I had a, a children's show I produced and I did some puppeteering and things like that. And I've done go. stuff like that. There and uh, it's funny because at my day job right now, we're, just, we're getting ready for our, our uh, we do a big convention every year to launch our catalog. And um, so they do a big video introduction and everything. And they, and I've been doing stuff for the video and then they're like, Oh, you're a natural at this. And I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, I, I used to do stuff like that because I'm very at work. I've got my headphones on and I, I mean, I don't usually say two words when I'm at work. I'm just working away, drawing. And, and then, uh, so it's, it's, it's weird for people to see that come out. But I think that's the same way with a lot of people who, you yeah, know, I think that's the whatever. thing. You might be like, uh, I don't know an artist that is not an artist in different domains. Uh, it could be writing and drawing. It could be drawing and, and see right now I'm sad because I have so many songs that I've written. I can't even, I don't have time to do. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, I've done enough so that I feel like doing the stand up thing back again. Yeah. Um, so, but you know, time is of the essence. The, the important thing. And I think the point of all this is that we usually are talented uh, with different talents, and uh, if we're lucky enough to know which one that we have the same taste than our talents, then we're lucky. That's it. That's that's all I'm saying. No, that yeah. makes perfect sense. And and I think that um, it's cool that you brought up the taste thing because that that reminds me of something that I I, I taught very like I taught for like four years at at uh, art college, and one that's of the cool. things I would teach uh, tell my students was that was that like what drew what draws most people to art in the first place is their taste so most of the time your taste is kind of there and it's kind of figuring out how to make stuff that matches your own taste and that's kind of the eternal battle is like unfortunately as you get better as an artist your taste grows and then you know like like for instance when i started in art i used to look at um i would have probably looked at herge and thought uh, and I always say herge, which is totally incorrectly pronounced, I think. <laughs> but um, but I would look at his stuff and just think, oh, that's easy, you know? And I'd look at like MC Escher and be like, that's what I want to do. And and now, like the more I've been at it with cartooning, I look at people like Herge and I'm, I'm yeah. blown away by this. The, like, I mean, he's not even as as simple as it gets, but the beauty of the way he simplified the form Oh yeah. So where there's no like like I was saying before, it's like there's no hiding anything. Yeah. It's, it, it, it's there's his no his line work is just perfect. And yeah. then uh, he was asked, uh, "Why don't you do like shades like in your colors?" And his answer was, "Listen to this, it's amazing." So he said, "A children looks at a a, a blue sweater. It's not dark blue on one side and light blue on another. It's a fucking yeah. blue sweater." <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. why he did only flat colors, except. Yeah very once in a while he'll do a shading especially if it's metallic or something like he did in the uh, rocket ship you know yeah. uh, uh, or in uh, La Ferre Tournesol uh, if you want to know his pronunciation you say it almost right it's Herge but you add the A it's Herge okay, in, nice. in English it would be Herge, Herge awesome. in awesome. French but if you say it the American way you'd probably say Herge yeah, my um, I I ramble. I annoy half the people who watch this thing by uh, my favorite cartoonist is Chris Ware Oh yeah, um, for living cartoonists and and very similar like ideology. Mm -hmm. A lot of the time, it's just a very like a side view or a straight on shot because he's concerned yeah. about story and just flat color. Yeah. I love that. Um, I, I love that too. I mean, I I I love doing coloring, so I I like to like my covers. You probably see my covers for for Scooby Doo. I'll show one right now. And they never, they, they paid me so well for the covers. I would have been ashamed to give them what others gave them. I put like all my, all my savoir faire in, in that stuff because I wanted them to be proud of their covers. They paid me a lot of money for those covers. The least I could do is give them something nice, you know? Yeah. And this is, I'll show you my favorite cover so you'll have an idea. 
I, I like I had fun doing them all, but this one would be my favorite one of all. Can you imagine the work I put into this, this one? Um, let me just uh, before I, I put it on, I want to have it uh, so you have it right here. Okay, let me let me um, put it right now on the. Um, Let me pull it full. Oh, cool. that's awesome. So you see, you see the Scooby Doo covers today. They don't give a shit. They do. They do. But look at that. I mean, I, I not only did I do. So I did the monster in the eye and everything, and then I colored him. Uh, I also drew the three characters apart and colored them in a blue uh, half toning. You know. Yeah. And uh, I put it in Photoshop on another layer, and then I fish eyed the drawing. So you had that true distortion of their reflection in the guy. It was my favorite yeah. one. Yeah, and that, the, the orange and blue is almost always just like, yeah. I mean, you can't go wrong with it. It just yeah. always looks so good using those to the point where, you know, it's oh, hard yeah. for me to, I, I, sometimes when I'm doing a print or something, I have to step aside and go, I can't do orange and blue again because I just use it too well, much. Well, you'll see different <laughs> colors, uh, different stuff. Like this is another one of my covers that I like. <laughs> A lot. Uh, it was a simple one. It was just like a family picture yeah. with a, a monster that has non-finishing. I don't know if you can you see it. Yeah. You know, I, I I'm just kind of in love with that monster's mask. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I I really love the nose on that <laughs> mask. It just looks super fun to draw. Oh, I had so much fun to draw. I can't even begin. I can show you um, what kind of brushes I use online. If you want. That's that. I can I can do that. That's beautiful. Uh, Is that like dithering in the background? Like I like oh, that. Uh, let me put it back again. Uh, what I did is I uh, used uh, one of my watercolor brushes uh, and did the background, and then um, I just did the uh, sh the shades in Photoshop, the shadows. Yeah. But what I did with the shadows that I don't do I I don't do Photoshop shadows and that's it. I took it. I put it on another layer. Right, then I deformed it, but then I blurred only the top, and made a, a sharp uh, shade in the bottom, Smart. like it would be naturally. And to do that, I did two shades, one with a mask that went with the blur on yeah. top, and one with the mask with the with the lesser blur under. So it has a realistic, um, and I and I put it overlay, so it had a, a better um, realistic uh, color. Different. It wasn't just gray on on the background. It was overlaid. That's so great. I, I there's like a little fold too on the back of uh, of Shaggy's pants, like right right yeah. um, mm -hmm. where his joint is. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. really fun. Like just the stylization you're getting. I, I, had, I had a lot of fun. We can, we can zoom in on that if you want. I, I just think fun. that's that's a great example of like somebody taking like a style guide but also you're yeah. bringing in some character and movement in there that's not you know just like right right well you have like, to, that's why the shade you can see you can actually see the background it's yeah. the shade on the wall it's not just a shade a shadow that's uh photoshop because my, my 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 goal with photoshop is to never make it look like photoshop yeah of course even no, though here, perfect, as you can see i put a little bit of um uh what do you call it um uh, when you when you make it uh, look a little bit 3D, you know, yeah, you can see there's a little bit of uh, uh, dithering there and stuff. But you can see here it's much more blurry, and as you go down, it's less blurry. It's awesome. It was a lot of fun to do that one. Um, let me see. Um, some were more fun than others. I had a lot of fun with this one. Uh, this one was a lot of fun. That's great. I use a lot of Photoshop stuff there, as you can see here. There's and I love the about. usage compliments in, in like all of these covers, like that red and gr green kind yeah. of vibe, but managing to pull it off without making it look like Christmassy. It, it right, looks, right, right. It, that's you just see, really brilliant. You see the, 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 um, the grass is grass I drew with my paintbrush on paper. I scanned it and made it a brush. That's so awesome. So now you have real painted uh, grass, but in Photoshop as a brush. 
Even the, the little, see the little bit, the, I'm really getting into it there. But, and I had a lot of fun. It's a nice cover, I thought. That was fun. That's so, awesome. Have fun with yeah. that. But I, I, I take time, you know, even with the teeth. You, as you can see, I, I try to make it look, you know, give it some ambiance, you know? Yeah. Like, like here, here's the teeth, you see? I, I use the, um, the tool that um, gives light to it, you know? So it gives that realistic light to the teeth. But it's still yeah, all cool. hand-drawn. I mean, everything. We, got, we have a, a really good question in the chat from I'd Rather Be Drawing. So, um, so coming back to licensing, a question for Vincent. Are you allowed to sell prints of those Scooby-Doo covers after you sell them for the comic books? Not officially. But okay. they turn their heads, but not officially, no. Right. And if I do it on, on a grand scale, then I get in, not in trouble, but they would, you know, they would call me in and they would ask, you know, let's let's talk about it. And then right. I'd have to make a deal. But uh, if I want to sell prints, like 10 prints, I, mean, I can sell them. There's not yeah. You can sell the originals too, correct? Like oh, if, that's, if... That's, that's yours. That doesn't yeah. even, that's not even theirs. Exactly. Whether you work for DC, Marvel, or, or Nickelodeon, all originals are yours to sell at the price you want. They, you owe nothing. They that's paid awesome. to publish it. They didn't pay for the originals. Agreed, yeah. That's, uh, that's awesome. And it's cool that it's kind of at that point now yeah. in the industry because yeah. it, it hasn't always been there. Yeah. I don't know. In France, it's always been the originals are yours. That's so yeah, I, I always know. thought it had been, but I keep getting worried that at some point they're going to try to change it. <laughs> oh, no. DC Comics were fantastic at keeping the drawings for like a month and then sending them to you on their coin. And they would send you a whole package of FedEx where yeah. you have all your originals. Uh, so do I, you, are you talking about nowadays? Do you still have to send the originals to them? or do you just No, now you can do original? everything by computer. Oh, that's right. So you keep your originals. But it, it's kind of sad because I loved when I had to send them in because first of all, they were on their own boards, DC comic boards, and they would come back to you with stamps and signatures from the, you know, licensing and stuff. And so you would have something that, in my view, was a little bit more precious than yeah. a drawing that you have never sent to them and it was never stamped by them. Yeah, there's something nice about the just the physicality of being able to send it out. It's like oh, it's it also seems slightly therapeutic because you're like, yeah, oh, it's done, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. I have to say. If I say one thing about DC Comics, and I, and I have a lot to say about them, and it's all it's all good, um, but um, it was an it was an, and is now because I'm back in, but it's one of the most amazing companies to work for. They are wonderful people. At Christmas, they will give the regular freelancers the ones that make I think it's over two thousand dollars, so that's easily done when you work for them regularly, and they will always send you a nice Christmas present. I've got like. Uh, duffel bags and stuff. I mean, they are so, they are so good with you, you know, with artists. That's awesome. I, I have only uh, great things to say about DC Comics. Only great things. So, um, yeah, so we're probably going to wrap it up uh, in a minute, but I know I want you to tell everyone where to find you and everything, but, um, but did you, did you, Tell everyone everything you wanted to tell them about Lemon, Lemon Crush It. I mean, you, I know you yeah. told me about, you told us about the concept as far as how it's got the link to the, you know, kind of the radio drama and stuff like that. Yeah. But uh, is, there, is there anything you wanted to talk about as yes, far as actually, what it's I all do. about? I, I do. I want to say that if, if you like Monty Python in car, comic book oh. form, that's what I'm going for. Uh, to Josh about that. He just did a yeah, Monty it, Python show. Yeah, it's it's more Monty Python esque. Uh, that's my inspiration, at least. Oh, nice. Whether I attain that goal, I don't know. Uh, the new story I'm working on right now—it's just a one pager where there's a, a kind of—I'll give you the story so you know it. It's um, um, romantic setting, like Jane Austen setting of a poet and his girlfriend sitting on a blanket in love with her prince, right? And he's reading this poetry that's beautiful to her. But in the panels, as they go, he's reading louder and louder and louder and angrier. <laughs> he takes her by the collar and shakes her and finishes his line. And then finally sits down, both of them, and he's like, <sighs> and she's like, oh, that was so beautiful. And there's a panel where they just look at each other. She has little hearts. In the last panel, he punches her in the face. <laughs> <laughs> that's the kind of humor you're going to get. That's um, awesome. So, so there will be something there linked to the YouTube channel, too. 
Uh, so, so yes, I have something to say. <laughs> I hate saying this kind of things, but I need help. I'm, I'm actually hoping, I, I have some people who helped me, uh, who showed their appreciation and, and support with PayPal. I have a PayPal that's out there, that's open. That's, uh, uh, so yeah, I need, I need help, all the help I can get because I'm trying to find a sponsor or a financer for that, uh, funding for that. But I, uh, I, I'm not opening a, a Patreon, but I'm not against it, but I want to do it only when I have enough uh, skits on uh, YouTube to do that. In the meantime, if you want to, I mean, not you guys, but I mean, if anybody uh, has their heart enough to send me some money, that's fine. But I'm not begging. No, I'm kidding. But uh, I, I, I hate to say that, but of course, that's part of your work. You need yeah. to get some money. So if anybody out there wants to help me, I would appreciate it. And uh, the, um, the appreciation goes this way, is I send the original I mean the original, you know, the HD uh, PDF files as I do the comic book. And once the comic book will have 22, 25 pages, I'll do, I'll do the cover, do the comic book, and I'll send it to them also as a downloadable, downloadable PDF, but this time printable if they want, you know, whatever. But uh, they will have, they will be the only, if you have the PDF file, you will have the link to the YouTube, or else you're gonna have to go independently to the YouTube channel and to the, Facebook page, which you can read the comic book there, but if you download it there, it'll be like, uh, you know, not printable or high quality. So yeah. the, the people who do help will get those little perks, and uh, uh, depending on how much they give, uh, I'll also send some original drawings because they awesome. are drawn on paper. So. Oh, awesome! Yeah, and I, I mean, I, I would say to our viewers too, um, because we get into a lot of that. Uh, this, this, the stuff that's creator owned is, is something we talk about a lot. And I think really, you know, most of our audience wants to see more of that yeah. in comics. Mm -hmm. So here's the thing, like that should be happening more. Support that, you know, support mm -hmm. that as much as you would support SpongeBob. And then he'll be free to do more of it, you know? It's, it's, it's so, a matter of time. That's yeah. all. Oh, um, it will be. If I don't get financing, it's fine. It just takes a long mm -hmm. time to do something because I have to, you know, pay my bills. So I, I, I do have work. But I, I don't want to, um, my dream is to, to, of course, let me be honest, my dream would be to do Lemon Crush It. That's it, yeah. you know, to be the Lemon Crush It guy. And yeah. I will invite artists like Mad Magazine to start working with me. I'm already working with, uh, you might know him since you're here in Arizona. Um, I'm um, working with uh, Big Chris. You know Big Chris? Um, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, he, we're going to do some t-shirts together. Uh, but uh, I, I uh, asked him, uh, we both talked and we both want to have him do the colors for the Lemon Crush It comic book. I love it. And, and like, like I said, I, I, think, uh, I think our audience will be yeah. super interested in checking that out. And from what, I, what you've shown and what I've seen, it, it looks just brilliantly drawn too. So. It, it's going to be fun. It's, you know, it's a, like I said, it's more like, it, I think I'm also thinking cartoon, so I, I make it simple enough. So that it could be animated, you know. It's, it's awesome. So it's mostly mostly skits because I know the one I yeah. saw was the the boy who thought he was a horse. Yeah, the pun horse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it's fun to draw those things. I did one. I don't know if you saw the one with uh, with uh, Bill Gates and um, that one is kind of funny. It's a uh, Bill Gates in uh, the medieval days selling door to door um, CD ROMs. <laughs> <laughs> And the, the, ending, the ending is quite funny. I, just I, the premise alone is yeah. funny. I mean, that had me laughing. And he, he, at tell, he tells Gates the guy, he tells the householder that uh, in 500 years, he'll have the material to actually read it. Uh, but you have to read that one. That one's funny. It's more Monty Python. That that's yeah, awesome. so there is, there is a link to uh, Lemon Crush It in the description. Yeah. You definitely want to check it out. And, uh, and you don't have to support me. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, if you just want to, you know, look at the comic and enjoy it, that's fine. But... Um, Awesome. I, I am it, going looking for a sponsor. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Have you ever thought about uh, like Kickstarter? Is Kickstarter is a edge, double sorted edge. If you don't get yeah. to your goal, sure. if you ask yeah. too much, and I'm scared to ask too much. What am I going to yeah. do? Ask people to pay me a year's worth so I can do a year right. when yeah. I'm crush it. What I'm going to ask, what for fifty thousand dollars to be able to? Yeah. You know, I, I, I can't do to, that. I yeah, can't. Do you that. have to have a track record too. I think. Yeah, Just yeah, you can't do that. Something like that because yeah. I wouldn't. I usually don't. I've done one Kickstarter before, but my book was already finished before I even started. So yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I would rather do Patreon. 
uh, yeah. via um, YouTube because there will be skits. And I think people are okay if it's under five minutes. And I have friends that do like atheist sites and stuff like that on YouTube, and they get good Patreon money, you know? Uh, so if people believe in what you do, in my case, it's silly nonsense. If they like that, uh, they, they will they will help you, you know, a dollar at a time, five dollars at a time. If they pay more, you they get more, you know, perks, of course. Um, that's just a way of encouraging a little bit more, you know, uh, patronage. But uh, I think patron is the good balance there. Yeah, yeah. And, and I love PayPal because PayPal, and now direct, uh, fa two people pay me direct Facebook. And that goes directly oh, in your okay. Yeah, it's like uh, they say, look, I'm going to send you $25, and two seconds later, it's in your account. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. And unlike PayPal, there's no fee. But oh, PayPal, okay. PayPal are asking. reasonable. Yeah, people are, yeah. you know, they, they, they're reasonable. I mean, come on, you know, they, they need a fee too. I mean, so. um, but um, anything helps, you know? Yeah. You know, Definitely. like I said, dollar at a time. But uh, it's. Uh, I hate it when I see at the end of a video, uh, don't forget to, to, you know, PayPal. Yeah. Uh, so I, I won't be doing that. I'll be doing it uh, like very discreetly, like you yeah. know, in the uh, comment, you know, saying, okay, you know, if you want to, you know, PayPal. And so, also, you know, if you're talking about t-shirts, definitely tie that into it with the yeah. merch. You oh, know, yeah. That's a big thing, you know. If, uh, uh, lemon Crush It will be very much just Lemon Crush It, but I will promote like, Lemon Crush It t-shirts and the Deporter logo because apparently that rings a bell to some people. I don't know. It's yeah, yeah. awesome. It's not about me. I, if I see people having the Deporter logo on me, on them, I won't think of it as you know me. It, it's it's weird. It's just I see this as a logo, like yeah. it's something artistically nice. Yeah. It's not about my name. It's not about me. It's about the people like it. They like it, you know. And uh, some will wear that having no idea what Deporter means. They probably think it says deported, yeah. and which it will be a T-shirt that will sell very, very well in the Trump era. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it! So we'll see. Um, yeah. um, I, I am like personally really interested in seeing this, so I'm sure our mm -hmm. viewers will too. And reading, reading uh, more because because of the fact that like like even I love Monty Python. I love that kind of humor, yeah. and just the examples you've shown and stuff mm -hmm. are. It's just it sounds great. I so, hope I hope people will awesome. go for it. Uh, I'm almost thinking that in England they'll be more like attracted to that kind of humor because yeah. it's really silly. Like the guy punching the girl in the face. Like, come on, it's dumb. I have another story of a serial killer. I won't say too much, but a serial killer who kills with spoons. <laughs> but the problem is that even when he's in court, like where he goes, everybody dies with spoons stabbed. You know. Into them. <laughs> Uh, so even the judge will die with spoons. I mean, it, it's just, I, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, I, the older I get, the worse my humor is. It's, yeah. So you guys definitely, definitely check it out. Cause yeah. I mean, it's just the, I mean, from the art style to the letter, like yeah. I said, everything, I mean, it's just like, yeah. if you, especially if you're, if you're a fan of like strip cartoonists and stuff, yeah. like, it, it just, it looks great. So I may do yeah. some pages of uh, a parody that will be very realistic, like, which will make it even more funny. Yeah, it's... yeah, definitely. So um, I'm not giving. I'm, I'm not giving myself. Uh, I thought of at first. I thought of doing different styles for different stories, and I may still do that. I don't know. I, I just want to have fun, you know. Yeah, but, yeah, that's the key. Yeah. All right. So let's uh, go ahead and wrap it up then. So Josh, where can everyone find you? All right. Well, you can find me lurking on Scott's channel every other week. Um, you can also find me on my own channel, uh, Joshua Kemble with a K. And uh, I just launched with Corey Kerr, who frequently shows up here. Uh, we're doing a 24 or a 48 hour art check where every other day of the week we have like what's sort of like the equivalent of an AA meeting for artists where we're holding each other accountable to getting our own personal books done. Um, My name and, is Vincent D. Porter, and I'm an, a cartoonist. <laughs> totally. I have stopped for two days already. <laughs> exactly. <Wait a> <laughs> um, and and it, I mean, it definitely, there's so many comparisons between addicts and cartoonists. <laughs> like oh, it's, gosh. it's just, I mean, just doing comics is an addiction. But um, yeah, and no the reason. The only other place to find me is quarterlystories.com, and uh, yeah pass it off to you, Scott, and you, Vincent. Yeah. 
I just want to also reiterate, yeah, definitely check out uh, the show that Josh is doing with Corey because it's great. And the, they, they built all this cool animation and everything, and it's like a live show. That. And the, the way they the – way, yeah, they, they've only got a couple of episodes so far, but it sounds like it's going to be every other day. So those episodes will start to gather up. So um, I'm going to – because I'll got i wrap everything up with the links and things. So I'm going to kick it out one more time over to Vincent. And just I, just real quick, Vincent, tell everyone where to find you and kind of what you want to the main thing you want to promote. You can usually find me in my room, <laughs> uh, sometimes in the bathroom. You don't want to go there. Uh, and uh, or else you can find me on Facebook, uh, Instagram, um, Twitter even. And on Twitter, I'm a little bit more – Philosophical and, and, and political, but um, so you might not want to go there. Um, but <laughs> unless you have the same ideas I have. Um, but um, that's what Twitter is for. Yeah, that's what Twitter is for. Uh, some people should not be on Twitter, though. Uh, <laughs> see what I mean? Um, anyways, uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. You can find me all there, and uh, you can always inbox me on, on Facebook if you need to talk to me. I do answer my Facebook um, chats when I can. Usually, I'm pretty fast, so you can do that and um, and uh, check out Lemon Crush It. And if you don't like it, uh, please uh, insult me in the comment section. And if, you, <laughs> and if you do like it, throw throw some money. Yeah, well. yeah, throw so me a few million. Dumping, I'll be know? happy. And he Joshua, doesn't have the he doesn't have the Patreon yet. But you can do no, it like a Patreon. Oh, you can do it. You can do it. You know, I I can I can accept money any other way yeah. than Patreon. And uh, Joshua, I sent you a request, so you have you can have the pleasure to uh, deny it if you want. <laughs> uh, so uh, it was a lot of fun talking to you guys. Thank you so yeah, much yeah. for inviting well, me. Don't don't hang up. We'll talk a little bit after the show. But okay, okay. Uh, so so as far as uh, me. Uh, like I said, I will be at Phoenix Comic Con coming up, and uh, I will be in the Artist Alley, and my table numbers, where are they? Okay, yeah, it's, so it's Artist Alley, uh, 1410 and 1412, right next to each other. I've got kind of a corner booth, and I'm, uh, I think before next week before that, I will have, uh, I should have another video in my, in my series that I haven't done in a while, the Pro versus Con Pro Tips for Comic Conventions, is I'm doing a lot of things differently, so I won't explain that all with you guys, so... Hopefully, I'll get a video up for that um, next week before I do the con. Um, and because I am doing the con next week, I think Artcasters is – I think we talked about maybe doing it on Monday. Is that right, Josh? Yeah, we're aiming for Monday. I, ha I have a okay. guest who's who's like 85% uh, down. So we'll, okay. we'll find out. Okay. <laughs> they freelance, so it's always hard to tell. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course, of course. And uh, so, yeah, so that's where I will be, and that's where we'll be next week. And if awesome. you want to know, because like I said uh, – you know, Monday's kind of a different time for us. So if you want to be in the know on where we're going to be at, um, what time, whose channel, because it, it switches back and forth between Josh's channel and my channel. Next week it'll be on Josh's channel, and then it'll be back to me. So that gets a little confusing, but if you want to if you want to just end the confusion and know exactly where we're going to be, just sign up for our newsletter. Uh, we don't spam you or anything. We just usually about 30 minutes before we go live. Um, assuming that we're on schedule, sometimes it's longer, like last week. But <laughs> um, but we'll send out a uh, just an email letting you know where we're going to be and a link to the chat and all that stuff. So we'll sign up for that mailing list. And uh, again, I want to thank Vincent for coming on. Hopefully, it won't be the last time. Hopefully, we'll have him on again. And, uh, Anytime. Yeah, and we'll have to talk. I'll have to talk to you after the show as far as maybe setting up like a drink and draw since we're so close or something. Yeah, it'd be cool. So, all right. So again, thanks everyone in the chat. Uh, and uh, we will see you guys later. I was going to say that as all, but that's kind of my web. That's my other sign up. So <laughs> later, guys. <laughs>